Hey everyone, Devolo here, and welcome to my series in which I go over the entire history of specific anime and manga characters from a variety of different series. In this video, we are going to go over the entire life and history of Suguru Gutu inside of the Jujutsu Kaisen universe. But before we get into all of that, if you are new around here and want to see more Jujutsu Kaisen and other anime content, make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave a like on the video as well if you do enjoy my content as it really helps out with the algorithm. But enough of that, let's get into the entire history of Suguru Geto. So nothing is really known about the childhood of Suguru Geto. But what we do know is that he attended Jujutsu Technical College along with Shoko and Gojo, and we are first introduced to him in Chapter 65 when during his second year at Jujutsu Tech, Geto, Gojo, and Shoko were sent to make sure that Meimei and Udahime were okay after not hearing from them for two entire days. After Gojo's surprise entrance in which he blows up the building holding Meimei and Udahime, they quickly deal with the cursed spirit and save the girls. Once they arrive back at the school, Geto attends a meeting with both Shoko and Gojo where their teacher at the time, Masamichi, was scolding Gojo for not putting up a screen and leaving the assistant manager behind. While still in the classroom, the group discussed the importance of actually putting up a screen. This somehow turns into more or less an argument about the strong protecting the weak and the reason for being a jujutsu sorcerer. This ends up climaxing in a fight almost breaking out, only with Masamichi showing up at the breaking point and assigning Gedo and Gojo a special mission from the Tengen. The two initially think that Masamichi is joking around, but he discusses the absolute importance of completing the mission and that both of them will have to be on the lookout for mainly two groups of people that are trying to stop the merging of the Star Plasma Vessel. After being informed by their teacher about the mission at hand, both of the guys, Gojo and Geto, head out. After arriving at the place where they're meant to meet the vessel for their mission, they see a small explosion out of one of the building's rooms. Then they see a young lady who turns out to be the vessel fall into the ground. Before she hits the ground, Geto manages to use one of his spirits to fly up and save her. The assassin, Q Soldier Kokun, then confronts Geto. Geto easily defeats the soldier and shows Kokun a picture of his defeated comrade through his phone. Once the vessel wakes up, who turns out to be called Riko Amanai, they introduce themselves to her. They then ask Riko why she's so happy even though she's going to be in the merger, and what she says, with the merger I will become Master Tengen, but Master Tengen will also become me. My heart, my spirit, my all will live on after the merging. That is why she still remains happy, with the hope that she will still somewhat remain alive forever. After going to Riko's school, they make contact with with Masamichi about the circumstance they are in. After talking with Masamichi, Gedo checks his surveillance spirits, in which, as he is about to say, if something happens they'll immediately let me know, he notices that two of his spirits have been exercised and immediately tells Gojo that they have to get Riko now. Gedo encounters one of the two intruders first. The seemingly elderly man manages to figure out what Gedo's ability is and tries to counter, but as he enters Gedo's combat zone, his life starts to flash before his eyes and Gedo easily defeats the man. He then proceeds to interrogate him him on who he is, whether he's with the Time Vessel Association or with Q and his small group. Once done with his interrogation, Gedo meets up with Masato and asks her about Riko's whereabouts. Once the last intruder opposing Masato and Gedo finds out that Riko is left with Gojo, he leaves to chase the pair. Gedo calls Gojo and informed him of the situation. After they find out that Masato has been kidnapped, Gedo, Gojo and Riko meet up to discuss what their next plan of action is. They decide to save Masato because Riko hasn't said her goodbyes yet. Immediately after arriving at Onikawa, they save Masato and instead of choosing to head straight back, they went to the beach and decided to have some fun. Gedo and Gojo discussed why the kidnappers wanted to do the exchange in Onikawa until they needed to head off, but when they were about to leave, Riko managed to convince Gojo, and then in turn, Gojo kind of forced, I guess, Gedo into staying one more day. They talk about sleep, and if one of them plans to stay awake all night to protect Riko in case of an assassin, and if Gojo is strained after using his curse technique constantly for four days. Once they wake up the next day and arrive back at the college, the four are taken by surprise when an unknown assailant showed up and stabbed Gojo through the chest from behind. While Gojo holds off the sorcerer killer, Gedo takes Riko and Masato into Jujutsu Tech and leads them into the tomb of the Star Corridor. There Geto lets Riko say her goodbyes to her friend Masato Kurai and then enter the Hall of the Tombs of the Star. Geto explains to Riko the route that she must take alone to Master Tengen's tomb and to her sudden surprise that he also wouldn't stop her if she wanted to leave. Riko takes a moment and decides that she wants to leave but in these 
moments, Toji, undetected to Gido due to his heavenly restriction, had tailed the pair after defeating Gojo. As Riko decided she wanted to leave, Toji shoots his handgun, hitting his target in the head and killing Riko. Geto, lost in thought, wondered why Toji had randomly shown up, but before he can ask, Toji proclaims that he has defeated Gojo and explains on how he has done so. Gido, enraged, summons spirits to attack Toji. One after another, Toji effortlessly takes out Gido's highest ranking curses and manages to deal a critical wound, but decides not to kill him to stop an incident with all the curses under Gido's control escaping and killing civilians. After Toji had left with Riko's body to go claim the prize from the Star Plasma Association, Shoko showed up and healed using her reverse curse technique. They then set out for the Star Plasma Group's headquarters. Once Gojo had arrived at the association's base, he found out that not only Toji was dead, but that Gojo was also still somehow alive and that he was the one who killed Toji, while also taking back Riko's body that had just been delivered. Before leaving, Gojo thought that they should kill everyone there, but the calm and collected Ghetto said no and that it wouldn't matter since the group would be disbanded anyways. After a whole year passed, Ghetto, who was with Shoko, was helping Gojo perfect his new technique. After throwing a bunch of different things at Gojo and being curious about how his technique exactly works, Gojo explains to them how he can continuously activate it without harming him at all. Afterwards, Ghetto slowly starts to subside into this darkness that we see him shrouded in throughout the Jujutsu Kaisen Zero series. He said to himself, It's been a busy summer, but there must have been an influence of the constant calamities we had last year. Cursed spirits were crawling around like bugs. I exercised and ingested again and again. Exercised, ingested. The taste of a cursed spirit that no one else knows. Like swallowing a whole cloth that was used to wipe up vomit. Exercised, ingested. And for who? Ever since that day I've kept asking myself, what I saw then wasn't unusual at all. I was well aware of the ugliness. I already knew that and made the decision to be a shaman despite it. Don't falter. As one who is strong you must fulfill obligations fucking monkeys. After this first light into darkness, Ghetto meets with Yu Hayabara. Yu asked Ghetto if he should get any souvenirs on this trip, in which Ghetto agreed and said that he might get something for Gojo and Ghetto to share. After this, Ghetto asked Yu if he thinks he can keep up being a shaman. While Yu was explaining why he enjoys being a sorcerer, Yuki shows up and Yu decides to leave them to talk alone while he heads out on his mission with Nanami. Once the two were left by themselves, they begin to talk about their own personal objectives, and Ghetto explains to her the source behind all cursed spirits and how to go about creating a place where curses don't exist and only shamans do. After Yuki leaves, realizing that Ghetto actually never answered her original question, Ghetto went and met up with Nanami, who was in the morgue mourning Yu's death. Nanami explains to Ghetto how Yu was killed during his mission. A few days later, Ghetto was sent to a village to exercise the cursed spirit thought to be causing mysterious disappearances and strange deaths. Instead of killing the girls who were thought to be the reasoning behind the murders, who turned out to be young shamans, he decided to massacre the entire village instead for wanting to kill the girls. Ghetto then takes these girls and is made a wanted man by the Jujutsu headquarters, with the rules that he is now to be executed on site as a curse user. A few days later, Ghetto meets with Shoko and explains to her something similar to what he explained to Yuki. After explaining that he wanted to kill all non-sorcerers, Shoko has Gojo come to Shinjuku to meet with Ghetto. Ghetto is confronted by a shocked Gojo on the streets, and Ghetto nonchalantly explains that he couldn't even make exceptions for his parents. After Gojo decides to not chase after Ghetto, Ghetto makes his way to meet with the members of the Star Plasma Association and explains that he is now in charge from this moment. This organization belongs to him. With major discontent flowing through the members, Ghetto decides to bring up Sonoda, one of the representatives of the association, and kills him to put his point across. Now we skip forward to Yuta and his first year at Jujutsu Tech. Ghetto releases a cursed spirit at an elementary school that ends up swallowing two children. After Yuta and Maki are both captured, Yuta beat the cursed spirit with the help of Rika. Three months later, Ghetto heads to the shopping district to witness the special grade cursed spirit, Rika. Ghetto used a grade 1 cursed spirit and had it fight Toge and Yuta to see if he would rely on Rika's power. After Yuta and Inumake manage to defeat the cursed spirit, Ghetto says that he was hoping to see the infamous Rika and that he should return Yuta's ID that he snatched during the fight somehow. After this, Ghetto heads back to his headquarters. 
A few days after the incident with Yuta and Inumaki, Ghetto is helping a woman who is cursed by a spirit. Ghetto ends up exercising and ingesting the curse and is thanked by the woman, but can't hold himself back from bad mouthing them and calling them monkeys that can't even use jujutsu after they leave. One of Ghetto's followers shows up and lets him know that the commanders are here. While on the way to his meeting, one of his donators, Kanamori, shows up and commands him to exercise his curse for the amount of money that he has donated to him. Ghetto remarks with one of his followers that he has been donated about 150 million yen but there haven't been any donations for the last six months. Ghetto then sets some small flea sized curses on Kanamori and has him torn apart stating to his female follower that non-sorcerers are just monkeys and their time is now over. Now it's time to realize the age of sorcerers but first they would have to destroy the cornerstone of the Jujutsu world, Jujutsu High. Ghetto then decides to go to Jujutsu Tech along with his group. He is instantly intercepted by Yuta and Maki's group. Ghetto instantly greets Yuta, trying his best to sway him into joining his cause, which is killing all non-sorcerers. Sarado and Masamichi along with Meimei and a bunch more faculty show up and confront Ghetto. They ask why he is there and he steps away from Yuta. He then declares to all those who are gathered up there that he is declaring a war on Jujutsu Tech. On December 24th, which is funnily enough the same day that the movie movie is coming out for Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, the night parade of a hundred demons will commence. Over 2,000 curses will be released throughout two locations, one in Shinjuku in Tokyo and the other at the Jujutsu Sacred Land of Kyoto. He then released a few curse spirits and escaped quickly with his group. On December 24th, Gido shows up at Jujutsu Tech and kills off two assistants. He states that his chances of winning are about 30%, but if his plan succeeds and he kills Yuda Akotsu so that he can capture the famous special grade curse Rika, then his chances will go up to 99%. Ghetto, who is snuck into the school without anyone knowing, puts up a screen around the school making it invisible to the outside world. After Ghetto easily deals with Panda, Inumake and Maki, he engages Yuta trying to kill him so that he can steal the Queen of Curses. He explains to Yuta that the weak bury the strong because of their sheer numbers and that their pompous faces that resemble monkeys make him want to vomit. Ghetto and Yuta face off and Ghetto manages to break Yuta's katana, but Yuta hits back immediately and punches Ghetto in the face, throwing him to the the ground. Yuta then states why he needs to kill Ghetto. Realizing Yuta is quite strong, he sets his special grade imaginary vengeful spirit, Tamamo no Mai incarnate, and every single one of his other curses numbering 4461, which he combines into one spirit using his curse manipulation technique, Maximum Uzumaki, onto Yuta. Both Yuta and Rika have a close moment and Yuta ends up releasing Rika's power and shoots it at Ghetto. All of Ghetto's curses are exercised and his right arm and a part of his shoulder are blasted off. Because of his injuries, Ghetto is forced to retreat and proclaims that next time she'll be his. But sadly for Ghetto, he encounters Gojo as he's hobbling out of an alleyway. Ghetto and Gojo have a small chat about trust in which Ghetto fesses up about the elementary school incident and throws back Yuta's ID, also fessing to Gojo that he was at the second incident with Yuta and Inumaki. After this, Ghetto is killed by Gojo but his body is never taken back to Jujutsu Tech, which ends up developing into the Suedo Ghetto case. The last words Ghetto chose to say were, it's just that, in this world, I couldn't truly be happy from the bottom of my heart. Not really much of an explanation for his actions, but I'm sure it resonates with some people. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the entire life of Suguru Ghetto. If you are new around here and want to see more, the lives of, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave a like on the video as well if you do enjoy my content as it really helps out with the algorithm. Also feel free to leave a comment down below with what you thought about the entire life that Suguru Ghetto led and what you thought was his initial fall into darkness. Was it before the village massacre or during the year time skip or even before that perhaps? But anyway, for now it's been your professional degenerate, Diavolo, and I'll see you all in a bit. Bye.